Let's get started. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate uh, everybody taking time out of their uh, wonderful Friday here to be with us today. Um, the presentation today is going to talk about uh, a little bit of, uh, about how Sage Intact can help uh, improve your clothes. And also, um, uh, I am not afraid to jump in the software, so we'll actually jump into Intact and look at some of the options that are available uh, in the software, how how the, uh, I'll say, the sausage gets made. So um, <clears throat> we'll get to see some of that. So in terms of our agenda today, we'll talk a little bit about uh, what's the, you know, the difference between the old versus the, the new month-end, year-end close. Uh, we'll talk about closing the books. Um, we'll talk about an important topic of what differentiates Sage Intact in terms of how it uh, uh, roles retained earnings as opposed to some of the other systems you may have worked with. Um, some key considerations uh, when using Sage Intact to uh, automate your close. And also it's important to talk a little bit about integ the integration partners that are avail that are out there that can even further uh, enhance and speed up your uh, month end close process and the collaboration around it. And then we'll take any questions that we have. So without further ado, um, you know, what is the biggest problem with year end and you could say month end close? Um, and you see here a cattleman or cattle rancher herding cats, right? It's it's always the case that, uh, you know, either somebody didn't update a file or uh, your uh, payroll didn't get in in time. It's always a matter of getting the data in to the system. Um, at the right time at the right place. So you may have a closed calendar that you're managing against, but it never fails. Uh, you may close your accounts receivable and you find that an invoice somehow was missed. Um, so, you know, having a centralized system like Sage Intact to provide you with one source of truth, one place where your close doesn't have to always come at the month end. You could do what uh, Intact very much touts as the continuous close uh, and close some portion of your books throughout the month. So we'll talk a little bit about how that gets done. So in the old, you know, we had systems that had backup servers, um, had restricted users from being able to process in the system. So, you, you know, not, not everybody that was involved in the close could be working in the system at one time. Um, and there was some restricted processing in the new fiscal year. I think the difference that you get in these cloud-based systems is there's no limit on the number of users that can access the system. Um, and so you get everybody working from one place, one source of truth. And you also have uh, a backup, uh, you know, data is always backed up and protected. Uh, so as your transactions are being entered, uh, the information is always there. The other thing that you're going to see is Intact has uh, a, a very open platform with APIs in mind. It has a uh, very robust ecosystem that provides all sorts of integrations. And one of those integrations is uh, well, some of the partners that are built for uh, those integrations that assist with close automation um, and further enhance the collaboration around the monthly close. So at the, in the end, it's you know you're really looking at in, enhancing the efficiency and the productivity of of uh, your work together. So you know we put this slide in here to talk about closing you know your your close process. You identify and you analyze your month end transactions. You begin to record your transactions into your journal entries. Uh, post your information to the general ledger. Prepare unadjusted trial balances. Uh, post any adjusting entries. Uh, year end, if we're talking about year end close, prepare your adjusted trial balance. And then you start preparing your uh, financial statements, closing entries. And finally, you're able to um, uh, prepare your post and close trial balance. Um, in Intact, this all happens in, in one place. Uh, so there's, there's no extracting of data. Um, out of the system to get to your post closed trial balance. It is all available in one system through uh, a combination of features that I'll show you here momentarily. 
So one thing that's really uh, that maybe differentiates Intact from some of the other systems, and I'm just going to call out QuickBooks on this one, is how Quick uh, Sage Intact deals with retained earnings. Um, you know, many legacy systems would take the retained earnings at year end and and create a rolling entry that would close out uh, the P&L into uh, the retained earnings account. Intact does this in a more automated fashion, and it actually becomes just a function of how you run the report. So you do have the ability to run a trial balance with the retainings earning, uh, retained earnings rolled and uh, without that. The beauty of this is, is that you can actually get a um, rolled retained earnings not at only at the end of the year, but uh, at the end of each month. So. Um, it, uh, later on, it actually becomes much easier. Let's say you are switching systems. It, it becomes much easier to transfer data to um, a new accounting system because you don't have to extract the retained earnings um, entries uh, automatically made by the system. So let's take a look at how uh, what that looks like. I'm gonna cancel this for a minute. So real quick, any any questions thus far? So I'm going to share my screen. Pull up Sage Intact. Let me know if you guys can see my screen here. Yes. Perfect. So this is Sage Intact. I'm logged in uh, laptop. Many of you are already Sage Intact users, so you know how to get into the system and many of you have already processed a close. Um, I think some of the things I may show you will give you some additional insights on um, some things that you potentially have not thought of or knew that you could do in the system. Uh, so the first thing I, I'd like to touch on is um, where we would make uh, our month end close entries. There's at least three options that I can think of of actually posting those close entries into the system and the output really depends on um, how you want it. So if you want to isolate your adjusting entries and um, later on go back and be able to toggle back and forth throughout the month um, when you run the reports to uh, remove the adjusting entries from your view or add them, you have this flexibility. So how does Intact allow you to do this? Well, Intact is a multi-ledger system. And what that means is it allows you to create uh, something called a user-defined book. So let's pretend we are closing our month end entries. We can set up a uh, user defined book, which is effectively a separate ledger and we can call it month end close. Now intact out of the box, um, as long as it's configured, it actually comes with um, two user defined books that are already baked into the system. And that is your gap adjustment books and your tax adjustment books. Additionally, it does have a functionality for uh, adjustments, and I'll show you in just a minute um, how all this fits together. So uh, your gap adjustment books, uh, obviously you can make your uh, year end or month end gap adjustments directly in there, and uh, as well as your tax adjustment books, you know, after your annual audit, you can make your entries directly into the tax adjustment books. The benefit of this is, is that um, rather than posting these adjustments in the um, 13th period, right, your adjustment period, Intact actually allows you to post those uh, adjustments in the period where they belong. So that when you run your financials, you are free to actually look at how those adjustments impacted your uh, periods, your monthly periods, your quarterly periods, rather than uh, only having the visibility into uh, your year end. So how does Intact do this? And I'll just give you an example. Any entries that are posted into either of these journals are then available to um, run when we're running any of our financials. So this could include obviously your trial balance, your P&L or balance sheet. There's a function, and I'm just going to Pull in the dates here. There's a nice uh, report filter here called include other books. And if you see here, 
uh, you have your gap and your tax books. So I could, um, at this point, when I run my trial balance, include my tax books in here. And what will happen when I run my trial balance, it'll actually take my um, entries book to my you know, general ledger, my financial statements, uh, financial entries, and then take my entries that were booked to my tax book and literally layer them on top of each other. So this is very powerful because then, you know, you can, um, you know, you can very easily toggle back and forth and see both views without uh, giving up any functionality in the system. Um, that's that's really powerful. And this actually also, you know, kind of a side note, you can have this same functionality for just about any other type of book that you want to track. Um, so for example, if you have the requirement, you know, management wants to see um, the financials in a in a different format, you can do that by simply creating management books and posting your management managing adjusting journal entries, and then you're able to run any of your financial statements um, using this toggle function that I just showed you. So that's one way. Um, another way, Intact does have a adjusting entry. Uh, period that is uh, effectively your 13th period, right? So any entries that are posted into the adjustments journal will then show up and uh, you know what? I'll just create a um, year end. Uh, now, nah, you know what? I'll, I'll show you exactly where this goes. So I'm going to go back to my trial balance. Run this as a year end. And there are two columns that are called adjusting debits and credits. So anything posted into the adjusting journal entries will automatically show up uh, in here. So you have a lot of flexibility on how you choose to post either your month end or year end adjusting journal entries. So one thing I, I want to point out here is again, Intact does not make any, um, any rollovers for the retained earnings at the end of the year. Um, it actually does this as a function of the the report that is run. So if I scroll down here um, and you can toggle this feature uh, on and off actually. There we go. So I can choose to turn off the, the retained during year to date balances. I'm going to click view and I'll show you what the system does. All right. If I turn it off, you see the transactions on our, my PL is zero out, and my retained earnings. Retained earnings right here um, uh, are, are not zeroed. I'm sorry. Uh, and then our retained earnings are, you know, not not rolled forward. If I come back here and I turn on this feature. Um, you'll see that it's it's not rolling anything forward and you can actually see that all of the um, beginning balances are you know what's on the PL at that point. So that's a that's a really powerful feature because again you can toggle back and forth without having to um, mess with a, a rolling entry. Um, this makes uh, auditing in my opinion this makes auditing easier. Um, and it's it, you know there's there's less to unravel during uh, year-end reconciliations. Uh, just a very very nice function that's built into the system. So Intact does have a feature uh, called Intact Collaborate. So obviously there's there's the entry aspect of close right, entering the month-end journal entries, uh, entering um, you know running the financials. But there's also a collaborative aspect of it, right? We have to be able to, uh, most people working in Intact are usually working within the confines of a team. Um, and so being able to collaborate around the close is um, almost as important as the close itself. So Intact has a, a nice feature. Um, it's very much like a social media layer that's built right into, um, right into the system and it's called Intact Collaborate. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to communicate with your counterparts um, either within uh, 
you know, your accounting department or maybe a subset of folks in your accounting department that uh, is identified out as, as, a, as the monthly close group or year end close group. So you can actually collaborate around transactions directly in the system. Um, so I'll, I'll give you an example of this, right? So let's say month end, um, you know, I'm the controller, I'm in the system, and I'm looking through journal entries, something doesn't look right to me. So maybe the uh, December entries, something just looks off to me. I'm looking at this and the write off just doesn't look right. So I can ask uh, either of a particular individual or um, a particular group of individuals. So uh, I can, I'm going <clears> to <throat> message Dave Kerr. For example, I can ask Dave, you know, um, this write off doesn't seem uh, doesn't seem correct to me. I'm going to go ahead and share this. Now, on the other end, one a uh, couple of things happen. Uh, one, uh, you see that the system has lodged this communication within the confines of the transaction itself. Very powerful later on when it comes to audit or really just you know six months later figuring out what, what in the world we were doing in here. Um, the second thing happened is Dave Kerr just received an email that he is going to be probably very confused about. Um, and that email is actually going to contain uh, my communication to him. <laughs> Uh, and a link back to this transaction. So uh, if if Dave is, you know, uh, you know the, the staff accountant on on uh, on this team and he's the one that posted this transaction, uh, he can uh, he click back on the link in that email. It will take him right back to this transaction and he could just as well reply to my comment by clicking the app button. So I can identify uh, in particular individuals within the chat, or I'm free to create groups. And I'm just going to type in, I can have a month end close group. And what this will do is, uh, you know, blanket communicate out to the folks that are part of the monthly close group that I've made a comment here. This is a very powerful feature, right? So anytime you're looking at, um, your month end close, you're looking at journal entries, invoices, bills that don't look right. Um, uh, this feature is also available on records such as reports, customer setups, vendor setups. Um, you know, this is extremely powerful to keep the communication right next to the transaction where it belongs and keep everybody on one page uh, without taking this out back into email or having a conversation about it. Um, you know, those clients have leveraged this uh, function have found that uh, it may not reduce their close close or their audit costs, um, but it does reduce the amount of uh, interaction that they have to have with their auditors. So th those clients that have really adopted this functionality have um, truly uh, seen benefits from uh, the, the, the level of communication that they have to have with their auditors, right? Um, they're able to, and oftentimes they, uh, we create a user account for the auditor. They can jump in here, they can ask questions, and uh, even furthermore, many times the auditors will ask their uh, questions directly uh, in here within the confines of the, um, the transaction. So very, very powerful tool. <clears throat> All right, so the other thing is let's talk about how Intact is able uh, allows a controller to control the process of the close. So um, out of the box, uh, the system does allow you to lock down um, and, and really follow, let's say, a closed calendar. So if you do have a closed calendar, maybe on the first or second, you start to lock down particular subledgers to prevent additional transactions being entered. You have the ability to do that in the system. So you can start by, for example, um, locking down accounts receivable. Maybe on the second or the third, you're locking down accounts receivable. To do that, simply go to accounts receivable and you have this close option. Uh, 
If you are a multi-entity company, you can close your uh, all entities at once, or you can lock them down one at a time. Simply select the period where you want to close, and then from there, you can just uh, close your books. Pretty simple. What this has done is it now will prevent any few, uh, any uh, invoices from being entered into the system uh, pr prior to that period that uh, was closed. So you can do the same thing in accounts payable. So same functionality is available in accounts payable. All right, so you can close your books. As well in here. Looks very similar. And again, you can lock all or some entities um, as you go along as well as the cash management function so you can also close your uh, sub ledgers and at the end of the close procedure you can lock down the general ledger same process the way it works in intact is let's say you don't want to go through the process of uh, closing each sub ledger um, one at a time if you do close the general ledger, it will uh, obviously lock down literally everything in, in the system. So, uh, you know, this is standard functionality at, at this point in many accounting systems, uh, but uh, it's you know, the way Intact has it makes it very easy. Additionally, um, with the functionality that's available within the user, uh, the user roles, and in, uh, in, in this case, we've turned on roles. We can actually control who has access to the these closing functions. So uh, by setting up roles for individuals, and most often we set this up for our controllers or maybe CFOs. Um, they are the only ones that actually are able to see or have access to the uh, close and open um, functions within the system. So real quick, I'll, I'll pause. Does anybody have any questions? Does this give anybody ideas of how, what they can do differently? Uh, those of you that are already on Sage Intact. All right, so let's jump back into our system and share my screen here. So some key considerations with Sage Intact um, in terms of your your close or even how you're setting up your accounts. Um, so Intact does not restrict uh, close to accounts, so you can post directly to retained earnings. Um, there is a functionality built in the system to where you can restrict it if you so choose, uh, but um, you know that that is if, if you want to prevent um, you know users of the system from accidentally posting to retain earnings that's an additional step that you have to take a second consideration is uh, you know multiple close to accounts can lead to problems and should be carefully evaluated some of our not-for-profit clients uh, you know do manage multiple retain uh, earnings or close to accounts and you know, in most cases, we try to talk them out of it, especially if we're, uh, you know, if we're transitioning from the a legacy system, which is where where they they uh, you know had this type of management. Um, we try to avoid multiple close to accounts because it creates um, you know, multiple complexities in the system. So reporting periods. So third consideration is reporting periods are used to determine values reported for income. Uh, an expense account. So uh, obviously setting up when you're uh, implementing the system, setting up the reporting periods correctly is really going to be critical to uh, ensuring that the reports are running correctly. So for example, that retained earnings button that you saw me press looks at the reporting period. So if the reporting periods aren't set up correctly in the beginning, those types of functions and pretty much all the reports that leverage uh, that toggle that you saw me press um, are not going to work correctly. Uh, another consideration, and I, I've already uh, mentioned this, is that nothing actually gets cleared, 
right? There's no uh, clearing entries that happen either month end, year end. It's just a function of how uh, the system runs the reports. It just virtually rolls over your PLNL accounts into um, your your retained earnings, uh, and the setup of that is uh, very very easy. All right, and uh, just uh, again uh, expand on the fact that you know journal entries, for the most part, unless there's a good reason for it, should not be posted to retained earnings. The system will automatically do that, um, do the rolling for you. Um, finally, you know you can update reporting periods if you've made a mistake on your reporting period, your period setup. Um, we are able to update that for you. So the last thing I'll, I'll leave you with is, um, you know, if, if you have a rather large group um, that you're managing your close through, then I would recommend looking at some um, integration partners that really make the month end close or year end close their business. So two partners that are out there are Blackline and Flowcast. And I'll follow up this presentation for all that uh, attended with um, some resources, that you know, videos that show you what Blackline and Flowcast does. But in a nutshell, what, they, what it allows you to do is more enhanced collaborative, uh, collaborative um, environment that uh, allows you to uh, work with a larger accounting team uh, to close your books and also ultimately reconcile your um, all your balance sheet accounts, lock that down, and then also control that process. Right? Any any changes that are made subsequent to the close um, can be requested through workflows and there's approvals and um, so I do recommend uh, for those of you that are either. You know, using intact or you know somehow involved with reselling it or, or supporting it take a look at these partners because um, they really do offer a strong value add to what intact can do uh, on its own